Uh, now, Thomas Herzog. Thomas Herzog is a German architect from Munich, known for his focus on climate and energy used through the use of technologically advanced architectural skins. He began with an interest in pneumo- pneumatics and became Germany's youngest architecture professor at the age of 32. He established his firm, Herzog Plus Partner, in 1983, now named Thomas Herzog Architecten. Yeah, that's a no. Thank you. Buenos tardes. <laughs> Good afternoon. So, um, I decided to to present to you um, a special material for building, one of the dominant ones which we have on Earth and which became more and more popular in the time after the year 2000 in the middle of Europe. I myself come from Bavaria and uh, what happens there is extraordinary uh, because uh, some years ago we started even in the universities with doing research and doing um, development in production and new kind of design all based on the fact that wood is two things at least. One is, it's a regrowing material. It's a natural material. And we are very much interested in this aspect according to the criteria of protection of the environment as well as uh, the question what happens with our buildings in the future. Uh, What is available without destroying nature and uh, the surrounding in which we live. And the other point is that it's out of even the traditional materials, it's the one which you can use in a really universal way. Almost everything which is part of architecture has a, a variety in a possible application um, in case we use that material. And we will see that it's not just one by definition, it's a series of variations, a series of in and out, and uh, it plays quite an important role. Even though <coughs> you have a distance, you see something with a special order, with a discipline in building, and you get closer and closer, and you find a variety of possibilities which are inherently in the, bu- in the material itself. And even that is not only to be said, because wood is not wood. We use certain categories Uh, which are available in the area where we are active. So, which means that, for example, in in the center of Europe, we have totally different uh, trees as the material which we take compared to what is in the south or what is in the north or what you may find in Japan, for example. It's a biological material which reacts depending on the temperature, on the humidity, on the question of how it is treated. So I, I decided to, because it's, a, it's quite a large topic, 
and and currently um, we uh, in in our university in the Technische Universität in München, for example, we could establish three professorships uh, which combine architecture and civil engineering in a very impressive way, uh, which uh, where there come out new approaches for building structures. Uh, this is one thing. Others, I will try to explain along what I have done in our office in the last 50 years, in fact. What we see on this um, picture here is a, an example for the possibility to use just one type of natural material used for different applications. So, for example, for a bearing structure or for covering uh, the surface of a roof or even making a fence on a sloped surface in a very beautiful way. I find it's important that we think when talking about sustainable design, and that's the topic of this Congress, um, we, we have to think of the variety which is on Earth. And as we have seen examples taken uh, from the center of the megalopolis, uh, which are growing enormously. On the other hand, great part of the world is, has totally different conditions and people live in different ways and have different cultures. So this is taken from the Alps and uh, it's, I like that building because it takes, um, makes us aware of the beauty of these constructions and you see it's also possible to take it for bracing and not just in a functional way but also uh, in a in a manner which gives us the idea of decoration. Without being decoration, it becomes what in Italy, in the Italian language, you call decoro, not dec decorazione. So, um, and uh, it's very famous also, together with one of the most prominent architects in the Renaissance, uh, Andrea Palladio, with, who did yeah, the famous villas in, uh, in Italy and in the Veneto. And what is less known is that he did a, a beautiful bridge which became the center of Bassano del Grappa, a, a nice uh, little city on both sides of this river, the river Brenta. And uh, this is not only a bridge which is covered by a roof, uh, it's also the place where people meet in the evening. It's a type of piazza above the water, which especially in summer when it's hot, is very convenient for people. Uh, another point which influenced me when looking back um, was was this tower, which looks like an elegant variation of the, of the Eiffel Tower from Paris. But in fact, it's totally made of timber. And the material has been transported from Canada, crossing the sea, and uh, then be brought down to the north of Munich, of my hometown. And this, um, this tower has been built for uh, the emission of radio waves and uh, so um, it was quite a long time working and this, I found it a fantastic elegant structure and as students we all have been there already and also looking up in the, to the sky um, when being un directly under this uh, tower and you see the elegance of the construction and the logic which is there. So, and this makes clear that it's not uh, just about trees, it's, it's about the question 
uh, in which variety we can use it. Um, so another point is clear that it's about disciplining construction because it's much more than just adding masses. It's, uh, it's about linear material mainly and for a quite long time, especially in the medieval times, the question how to make how to make walls, how to have an envelope, how to close buildings, uh, was answered uh, by using um, this kind of, of uh, brickwork and clay. And so they came up what we call Fachwerk in Germany. And uh, this, of course, has not been uh, uh, just uh, pine taken from the uh, wall, but it has been, um, sorry for that, it has been uh, taken out of, um, out of areas where they cultivated this kind of mainly oak trees. An important jump was this little uh, church, or it's a chapel, uh, designed by Peter Zumthor. Um, he is um, a Swiss, a very famous Swiss architect, and he did, uh, he showed a way how you can use the material just identifying the difference in the, in the sensible handling uh, of, uh, of these uh, pieces, which give uh, a kind of uh, curved surface um, without anything adding. It's enough just to do the, a, a cl very clear form so that in the surface the material uh, becomes important. Imagine there would be some underlinings or separations. It would, be, it would lose. It would not be that beautiful as it is. In the meantime, now, uh, it's grey. It's another point which is of importance. We have to identify that nat natural material is changing its identity. So, similar to other existing biological systems, those of you who are a bit older have, like myself, have grey hairs or white hairs, as long as they have hairs, it's, it's uh, okay, I guess. And uh, um, this is an important uh, point when thinking of wood as material. Uh, these are the hats of a building in Bordeaux made by the, uh, designed by the office of Richard Rogers' uh, office. It's, uh, um, it's just the head of halls uh, of uh, uh, a, a large public building and they are have a form which is exclusively uh, uh, acting as a part of the ventilation and lighting from the top which is then talking about natural light of, we say from in the same aperture from six to ten times more effective than the same opening on, in the facades. Effective in the sense of gaining light for the inner space. Um, and uh, so I will show you a, a building which was the first one I have done together with two friends, uh, a summer uh, building in, in Bavaria uh, for um, a friend and this is Nothing else but just a simple construction with a bracing and the whole building is glazed all around and as we know that we have faces where we do not want to have that and others where we are very keen to have it. So we said we make everything in the facade changeable which is not only the sliding doors like you see here, but it's also the way how we can open and close. And the other point for the concept was to say that um, 
there's a need to, besides the, this one room, which is all around, and optically and for use, it's also open to the sides, uh, is that we have installations and there's water and there are showers, toilets, whatsoever, and a kitchen. And this is made by brickwork and all covered with mosaic. And we took out these parts where we can have a maximum uh, of six very small uh, places to sleep and there are possibilities for people having holidays there. And the building is used in the time between the March and the end of October. But just doing nothing else but having this part here, so it's a separation between this space and that one, and we can be combined with the outer side. So we see some of the sides, and uh, uh, the, no the northern part, where there are this, uh, the bed um, is, has a different height and has a, uh, and has a, a, a small windows, a row of, I don't know, that's not working, sorry. Uh, and, uh, and you see here, it's, it's a minimum height. It's like in a ship in a yacht where you sleep. And then this is, can be open and closed. You have a little table here. Very simple, you may say, but for me, this was an important experience which started on the fact that we could not build because this is close to the lake and we were informed this would be not uh, adequate for a construction of that kind. Um, and we had to look for something very lightweight, which is a special aspect for this kind of uh, timber construction. So, um, no need to give too many comments, but uh, maybe it's uh, of interest that, uh, of course, even the inner walls are made of this material. It's difficult to use this. Ah. So, uh, I said, uh, we, we, have, we choose this system which is rolled up and it's a very special um, construction which at that time was not yet available but we could find somebody who did it and so we have we can protect against too much sun and we can make it open we can have a little transparency but it's still well lit and so on uh, from the outside in summer it's shaded by the hangover of the roof and uh, come on So, okay, this, a sim in a similar way outside these things. It's a bit the language of, of sailing boats or so. Okay, so, um, what? Yeah. 68, this was exactly 50 years ago. Now, in winter it's closed the most time, but if people, if these people go out and and the weekend, for example, and you see they have a, a, a positive effect by the, by the sun, which can penetrate the whole surface of the facade and heat it up. So um, another point is that uh, about 80 to 90 percent a day, we human beings in the, at least in the um, in the areas in the, uh, in, we are not in the very south and not in the very north, but uh, in the areas where, uh, the, I don't know how, how you say in English, the gemäßig the zone, a moderate climate, is, we are inside the buildings. So the question, um, in, in the sense of aesthetics as well as the, the question of the building physics uh, and the internal radiation is very important and there are many, many examples which uh, 
could give us ideas about how to uh, how to use rooms in a beautiful way and even a very effective up to the maximum of a, a depth like in in churches where where people can stand and sit inside so it it's it's the object of art uh, by using the same things now this year as all of us as we know in in venezia will be the biennale in short time from now and i would just make a little jump to tell you what has happened some uh, some years ago um, this is uh, there was an invitation to uh, to use the bricole di venezia this is the the trunks uh, which are used uh, put in the water to fix the boats when they stop and when they are in in quiet positions and uh, the, the, this this wooden um, elements are by in in a time of a few years are covered by mussels and they have very sharp shells so what happens is that the rows which are used to fix the boats are cut and destroyed and what happens since a very long time is they are taken out some hundred thousand taken out and put in new ones and the question of a firm in north of italy uh, was what happens with this material which is very beautiful and good just the outside the outer let's say five to ten centimeters are not anymore um, if uh, adaptable so they invited a series of uh, of designers around ten people including myself as an um, a foreigner and said well just have ideas and produce something and here you see uh, uh, what came out there was uh, was uh, Michele De Lucchi and Mario Porta and uh, a series of others and you see where they, they made an exhibition and people came in and have been uh, very interested in, in that and because it was a new concept to contribute in uh, to the topic of uh, sustainability in a very in a nice way, in a sympathetic way. Everybody had a good feeling and it's, it's a good smell of the material and, and many ideas what could be done with it. Uh, so uh, I think uh, there, it, it, there's a need that we have under the aspect of sustainable design. We have to rethink the way how we build and how we make objects and uh, and how we uh, can use things. So I'm sorry, yeah. Okay. Um, now there's another point in, in Venice which I admire, I must say. It's the forcule. This is what is on every one of the gondole and where the gondoliere uses this pedal to guide, to to push along, to, to block, to make curves. And this is just on one side. And uh, the, uh, this is fantastic to see how it is used on different po points with different effect. The axis of the gondola is curved, of course, because it's not, it's not straight, it's curved because it's just on one side how it is handled. I show that because I'm convinced that uh, very much is a need to make uh, architectural work beautiful, beautiful uh, down to the uh, to the very detail. And uh, so we are used to know these things in 
other uh, areas which is where it is very normal to have curved and things which change the, the, the sections and, uh, and at the same time it's very functional. So uh, why not uh, continue with this kind of approach for objects which have a function? It's not free art. It, this is, uh, may, you may know that even cars exist which are made of timber. The frame, for example, the famous Morgan uh, construction and have a, have a timber, not timber, well I say a wooden, a hard wood as the material for the, for the bearing structure. And when looking back in architecture and going close to details, you may uh, identify that there are many things which are not only what is necessary and what comes out cut from a machine, but it's added in a in an elegant way, so that it's beautiful to be close by and see how things are made and understand how they work. Of course, this is a traditional way, and it's, of course, it is a, a handmade, and it's not a contribution for the industrialized production. On the other hand, when you think of products made by industry, there is a lot of possibilities to influence the product even or especially because um, there are great series. Now uh, I come back to, to our own um, work and this was about uh, a decade later. Uh, this, this is a, a, a private house uh, in uh, the beautiful city of Regensburg in Bavaria on the Danube River, and uh, I, I was asked to design that for a couple. They got children after that, and uh, they said, well, we are happy to have a place in the city. It's not outside, it's in the city, uh, and uh, we, we love uh, the wooden constructions, but uh, we want to have, a no for a normal family, a normal house, but not in the sense of the architecture, but in terms of functions. And uh, so I said, well, I would like to add uh, something I had learned in the years before to, uh, to integrate a kind of lean on, is it in English? It's a kind of, of uh, glass house towards the south so that in, in springtime and autumn we can use this area uh, as being heated by the sun and protected against rain and snow. Uh, and there was a problem because there was a wonderful tree standing there and we were allowed to build this uh, from the side of the client. The only condition was it should not cost more than an average freestanding private house in the country. Um, and they said, well, you are the architect, and, we, and of course, when I came up with this, uh, I had to build a model, which I did in the, in the German Academy in Rome and in the Villa Massimo. And uh, so you see this, the tree I mentioned is that one, and it's a very important element because it's glazed, this, this part is glazed like that. So we come up with the outer skin, which has this form. And there is shade. But if there are leaves, which means starting from April until late October, this is shaded, this area. So this means we have a different temperature from here to there. And that's why this was a tricky thing. That's why we do not need the normal openings, which are on the top and would be here, because I didn't want, this was my interest, to, to find a solution. How could one have passive solar use by not doing these normally quite ugly um, openings which uh, do an interruption uh, to such a, a very simple uh, clear form? And we could, um, you've seen it on the last photo, we could have uh, along this because of the difference in temperature, uh, we could have a ventilation. 
a natural ventilation. Uh, so this is covered by, by metal, and this is, as you see, is glass. And uh, so um, that, I tell you two experiences, because to talk about architecture is not first to talk about dimension. It's about identities, I think. And uh, I said, well, uh, I would love to do that. I can't give any guarantee in terms of percentage of how much um, fossil energy we probably could reduce. But uh, I'm sure it will be an interesting, a beautiful thing. But I have to admit, it may be it becomes dirty. And the first question could be, how do you polish? And who would do that? And so this could be a reason to reject the idea. But the answer was, well, we don't believe it's so important, and we will see. So the client was very tolerant. The, what we identified, and this is part of the concept and part became part of my philosophy in any kind of design, is we should build the skin or the outer envelope of a building, not only against something, against rain, against snow, against wind, against the sun, too much sun. Uh, we should use the natural situation and the natural power in a way that we do our building with all these categories. This means we were very much interested in what would happen. I had just told about light and, and, and ventilation, but what happens is, in autumn, for example, the leaves fall down. They have colors, different colors. And you are inside the house, very close to this effect. And we've seen little insects moving on that. And you could stand there and see the contribution of the natural elements close to your eyes in a short distance, like you never do it normally. So this is a surplus which we get when, to, when we do things like that. So one day happened an interesting effect, which was there was the first snow. And the building became blind, you can say. But of course, from the inner area, one had a look out to the glazed uh, room, but, there were, but it, was, it was blind. And suddenly, in a moment, there was a sound. There was a And this was the snow who came down and polished the glass. So nobody would expect it. But uh, that's the experience, and it's working still that time. Uh, and the, um, the plan was very clear. Uh, I was influenced, I have to say, by my experience in Japan, where I was lucky to stay in the classical uh, Japanese house for a while. And uh, a, a very strict and clear geometry, uh, a smaller area for the very special rooms, entrances, toilets, bathroom, kitchen, store, and so on. Some of these rooms go in, th in that. And all sliding doors, they can internally be open or closed, so they can combine rooms or separate. And double height, you see it here, so that even these sections are different from one to the next. And this was, again, part of the conceptual work to, to find the solution which is very clear and very simple and could correspond with the material and the way how it is treated, but have a complexity in the inner spaces, which I uh, always find is an important. So we studied, of course, what would happen. And in the end, we came up with about 50% of um, um, fossil energy uh, compared to the average consumption of this kind of freestanding houses in Germany. Uh, and we stood inside the limitation of the budget. It's also important. Of course, we had to do more. We had to be 
to work on models and we had to convince the client and uh, also the workers. But uh, we got the next job um, from uh, an, a person who had seen the, the first house and, uh, and he insisted he would have something similar. But this was uh, more urban. It's another inclination. It's not one to two. It's one to one, which means 45 degrees. And it's the, the glazed area goes up to the top and is an outer skin of glass. And we used a standard construction, not this fat window frame so, uh, solutions, but a very, very slender, which are on the market just for greenhouses. And, uh, and uh, the house itself, the, where people live in, is that one here. This is well insulated, and here we have uh, an inclination with the insulating glass, and here we have a long facade with uh, sliding doors, and you can combine it uh, with uh, under um, the area here, the light comes in from the top, but this has to have a certain distance to get the, the air moved without any kind of ventilator or something. Uh, uh, La Mele, which can be closed and open depending on the, on the season, is clear. But uh, this girder is not steel, it is, it is wood. Um, five by seven centimeters here. And this is a distance of um, almost 90. So, um, you, this can be opened and closed. We did sketches to explain how it would work. And, uh, and then it's more than just one house. It's a, it's a unit with three elements, which is uh, where a doctor lives in. A very small one, just one. It's only three meters. Um, and three, and, um, and this, this step here is, is at 18, I guess. And, uh, and we have a very small one, and we have the four axes, and we have two. So it's one, two, three, four. Um, and we could compare how it works when it's in the same proportion changes. Um, and this, it's uh, important that in here, this was in, taken in rent by the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft, which is in Germany one of our dominant um, our research institute and this they've been in that for five years because they were very much interested they had developed the first prototypes of photovoltaic panels and uh, and the first uh, installation uh, of heat pipes uh, tubular uh, thermal collectors uh, and uh, they did not have the chance of any application so by support from Brussels, we succeeded to make a research program as well. There was no product on the market. It was just prototyping. Um, and uh, of course, uh, it was very interesting how we could manage this house so that these upper spaces, for example, like the one which is in front with the same size, uh, could be used from the inside from the inhabitants. And you, what you see here is a, a funny thing because Siemens uh, told me they would produce these elements to have a first application on the continent. First, they rejected it. They said, no, never. This is not for building. This is, one never would use photovoltaics for building, I was told. They said, no, that's for outer space use for satellites, but um, so we got this for the experiment and there was another producer in Germany that said we have a wonderful waiver, but uh, we, we don't have a firm to produce it and without that we can't do it. So I said, well, just give me the material, we design it and show you how it works and even more beautiful uh, because this had an, a back of polyurethane insulation which means it's less effective than when it's ventilated, of course. And they learned on this occasion. 
And uh, I wanted to have this transparent because from the inside there was an effect which one never had seen before. What you also can identify here is this was the first application of these tubular uh, collectors produced in prototypes by Philips from Holland. And uh, I found it uh, really uh, fantastic to see uh, what that this kind of shade comes out and this semi-transparency was always uh, a point which uh, made me nervous. So, okay. Um, so, we, having done this, we decided we should, we means in that case, uh, Julius Natter as, a, as an engineer for timber construction, he has the institute at the ATR, not ATR, at the APFL in Lausanne, and uh, um, is a dominant uh, engineer in that sector. And we have been working uh, on the question, how could we make a system out of that and, and use it for existing buildings? Because this is, of course, um, um, in, in numbers, is much more than just uh, the new constructions. And we, we see now some details of this house here, which is a conventional uh, building after the war, uh, which has been bought by a colleague of mine. And uh, there was a need to improve for almost everything. Uh, we made uh, this construction around uh, all in, in wooden elements and added we did all the development of these points and everything and enlargement of the living areas and a small office for four people, point uh, for the two cars. And um, we were able to, uh, to double this. The surface which is in use in the building is two times the amount of time before and the beginning, and in the same time, we were able to bring down to 50% of the energy consumption. So, um, this was a next important step. And then, again, in parallel, we were interested to develop new, new concepts for building. And, and when you know that if you put 100% for one facade of a squared form, let's say this would be south, you may have, when you say 100%, and compared to the east and west side, so you come up with a certain amount. And when you turn it 45 degrees, and you make a, a diagonal typos, so this has 75 and this as well, so you come up with 150. And in the end, it's about one fourth, uh, which makes it more effective. We, we concentrated the insulation, the installation, which in this kind of constructions is always important. They have a the ground floor, a living area, and I don't go too much in detail, but what is uh, also important, they have a, a second uh, a store on uh, well, ground floor one and two, and this, the roofing and on, on the... Um, together with the stair, they have a balcony for, this, uh, uh, for the summertime, and uh, so everything is oriented to the fact of the diagonal things. So this is always a combination between the material we wanted to use, uh, the way how the, the construction is made, and the colors and the mood inside. And having done these things, I got a uh, contact with an engineer from Lufthansa who said, well, I have a place where I want to build in the south of Munich, and um, I, I want to, uh, to have you as architect uh, because I'm interested in solar use. So what we've done is, is um, that building here, which has a th three meter 90 um, all over, and I wanted to see what is it possible to have a plan where the flat angle of the winter sun would would be help would help to, that the sun would penetrate the whole building instead of having certain rooms in the northern part. 
separated. So, and we did it in, in the, uh, nowadays, it's, it's full of plants because we had learned we need more hay to, ha to have uh, the right plants inside. The concept is shown here. So and you see it's a bit like, like a boat. This is the cellar along the whole structure. And the, the, this comes out here and again here a bit more in the roof as well. So the point is to get a uh, constructional protection against 80%, I guess, of the normal rainfall so that we protect by construction and form the, uh, the wooden uh, uh, bearing elements. And we use also a new kind of, uh, uh, of plywood construction to make it adequate to the, to the surface of the two layers we have here in the roof. Uh, what, I, what I can tell you is that this is an extraordinary experiment because it's, it, the bracing is very long and we had to expect to get it heated in summer so it would not work anymore and probably a risk that the glazing would break. So that's why we made it on tension. So we had the special details we developed to, to uh, make sure that it works and it, you see it here. Um, we, we took this six centimeter uh, um, wooden uh, stick and, and brought in a crew from the top and then uh, designed, a, designed a form here which is uh, put in the axis of this beam and then could continue that way like you see it here. That's what I mean when I say well, think of detail, think of form as a result of consideration in material and construction, functional need. So if you are clever and have an idea about the quality even of form, so you can come up with solutions which are uh, an advantage for the building. What you see here is now another point which we could do the first time, again together with Fraunhofer, is a the Institute now has more than 1,200 researchers working in Freiburg. There's no architect. But at that time, there were just about 20 or 25 people. So they were very keen to get the possibility to, uh, to make an application somehow. Okay, we said, well, that's our point. We try it. And uh, th this was about the question how to change the, the insulation. Dämmung is the German word for, for in, thermal insulation. Normally in winter, if inside a house, let's say you have 20 degrees outside, maybe zero, and the insulation is here, so the temperature goes down. This is the normal way. This is a simulation, well, this is the solar input, a part goes through and the rest is, gets out. In case you are able to make this layer here translucent, which means the sun goes through and comes to this surface here in winter, in the late, uh, in the, uh, when it's cold outside, you, you have a heating effect and the insulation works in the way that it's kept inside here. So that's the principle. And you see here, this is this material which has little tubes with some millimeters in diameter here, it's polycarbonate. And so we, we used a panel of concrete and made the surface uh, black, matte black. And then we could put this in front and there's a sheet of glass. And behind this is a very simple thing. When you have this, the same wall in two positions, let's say a brick wall, uh, covered with plaster, painted black matte. And you have a second one, they are separated. Um, you have a second one which is white and reflecting, it's almost 100% difference, which happens and is effective when you want to use the solar power. And uh, uh, some years later, there we in Windberg, which is a little medieval, uh, village uh, with the wonderful uh, monastery, 
Um, we were asked to do an enlargement because uh, these monks are very successful as teachers. Uh, in, uh, when people come, this is in northern Bavaria, uh, this is a, 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 a basilica, which is Roman, uh, and uh, this is a, a Baroccan part, this as well. And we added this, you see, this is on top of a hill, and, uh, and these are farmers around here. So we took the same geometry and made this new building. Uh, which you can see here. And in the front, we used what I explained, uh, this kind of new, uh, of new uh, insulation, thermal insulation. But what you can see also, and that's why it is part of talking about wood as a building material, is this part here, which is, has the same length, but it's, uh, it's shifted to make it more autonomous architectonically. On top we have, we have uh, solar collectors, uh, which uh, are very effective. And I tell you what this is about. I separated the, the rooms where they are during the day or, or sleep. These walls are flexible. They can do different size and so. And, and uh, we have a heavy construction this has been a res, res, uh, result of calculations in different material, concrete or heavy brickwork or limestone or whatsoever. And uh, in the end, the, the optimum was to use uh, uh, what has happened, uh, you see. But I separated all the spaces which ha have as a character that they are used only for a short time which means the stairs, for example, or toilets, on, uh, or magazine, and also, also showers, which we have, because it's maybe two hours, maybe three a day, and, not, and 21, 22 hours not. So there's no need to heat it up in permanence and keep the temperature inside. So when we do think so, we could allow ourselves to say, well, this is something totally different. The material has a, has a quite acceptable character in terms of thermodynamics. Uh, we have a high, it's highly insulated. We organize um, a high range of air change 12 times per hour, but here we have 1.5. No need to put energy in this. And, uh, and this may, this is an elevator for, for uh, handicapped, this is uh, uh, the entrance. So you see, this is a separation of functions, uh, which is part of the concept under the criteria of, uh, of energy household. The facade in the south shows you the elements which we did of this size. And I have to admit, up to now, uh, this is a long time, it's more than a quarter of a century. I have never published the details because I always say, hopefully, hopefully it works because there was no example before. And as there's a change in temperature, there are many questions um, about that. But I'm happy to say that up to now uh, it works. Uh, and the northern part is much more closed uh, we have these flaps for the natural ventilation. All the solar installations are on top. The, we have the, the hot water and, the, and, uh, and we use it for the showers. It's 100 people in that house. So this means there's quite a lot of need of hot water. And we have the tanks on top and very short distance. And when we have the so a collector's close by, there's no loss of temperature because of these short uh, distances. Uh, and the farmers said, well, that's totally different, but they accepted it architectonically because they say, well, it's, it's nothing else but our barns on, on there. What's, that, what's that used? You see up here, there is a, you see a little part of it. And they said, well, 
okay, and it changes color. It's not anymore like the, on this photo. It's now again gray. I explained that effect before. And it's all about, about architecture. We've been winners of the Bavarian Architectural Award with that building. So there's a, anyway, this is an aspect I find is very important. When one, when one pushes, wants to push architecture in the direction of being in another way, uh, treating the, the material and energy resources questions, it's important to come up with with success, even in the category of architecture as a culture. We separate in this uh, section the, the passive effect, so this heating wall is here, and this is the uh, active tile, but, and you see it uh, again, it's really two elements in, in combination. Um, so, uh, next step was uh, no, I just can't tell you, uh, the effect is enormous. We had, because Fraunhofer controlled it, did the monitoring for five years, it came up with uh, 75 degrees maximum in January when outside temperature was zero. So, uh, and then I was asked to do a plan for a factory. Uh, this is existing. And this was, is the first building we made. It's a three times a span of 30 meters. Frey Otto had made first uh, the sketch for these pavilions. And uh, they're very beautiful. You see it here. And we did this, this long construction with green roofing. Uh, Otto's pavilions I found very very impressive, and uh, it's also a timber construction, a double curved, and uh, very elegant and lightweight. So, and uh, people working there love it. So we then got the job to do that one. And the client said, we want to have a building according to ecological criteria. And by everything you are doing, you tell me why, and what it is good for. And uh, so I explained him the concept. I said, well, we have higher parts and there are the small rooms inside, like you have seen in the, in the last example. And this is a free hall where you can produce whatever you want in any direction without any column. Um, and you have, but why do we have this? I said, well, for cross ventilation and get light in and uh, and so you can imagine how it works. Think of, of your people who act together. So these are the small parts and the rest is free of any construction. And uh, all the timber is, um, is used for this part. And this is the suspending and bracing here, uh, which is uh, made by steel. So uh, the question, of course, came, well, if you do a, a wooden construction for a factory, why do you need steel? Why are you not able to make it without that? And uh, well, my answer was, um, yes, uh, it would be possible, but we could use the intelligence of doing the, uh, an effective construction. Uh, but, so I wanted to have this hate to have insulating uh, a translucent material uh, so that we get in the depths of the building the light in. And I said, maybe you have ever seen a, a violin. And I, I, nobody, I never heard that people said, make it. Uh -huh. So I hurry up, okay. Anyway, so this is the inside and the front, yeah? And uh, I, I jump now because it's, uh, it's too late, she said. So um, this, just make you aware of the effect here. The hot area here penetrates this, uh, this um, grid, which we made as the construction, which in, in the, uh, it goes up. And it, we've been winner of this competition to make a, a, a filling station on the autobahn. And uh, uh, so um, we invented a way how 
we could bring up the, the warm air to the top to lift a part of the top to have it a ventilation on that place. And uh, this is a four layer construction by using timber which is not glued. This was never made before. It's, uh, it's four layers of material, each of which has six centimeters, and by nailing it, it's combined to 24 centimeters, and this in four layers, so that the air goes through and we have the bearing effect. Uh, and all these beams are connected to, to each other, and the height uh, is different, so that we just make these bolts longer and keep the roof in a slope position. So no penetration by any kind of insulation and the water goes down. Um, and we were told it's the most effective uh, insulation they have on the Autobahn in the south of the country. And um, in case of this high-rise tower we made for in Hanover, um, the question was, what can we do? There are many, many features using the height, the chimney effect, and using uh, also a double skin construction here. Uh, so we could uh, reduce the cost very much because this is just a skin outside and not more. But inside, we were allowed on the whole height to use wooden constructions for the sliding, for the, the windows with sliding doors and everybody who is working inside can personally decide how much fresh air she or he would want. There's always a light overpressure because in Hanover it's always wind. So we said we use the outside power of the wind, control it by lamelle opening and closing, have a light overpressure here, reduce very much the cost of these uh, shading devices and, uh, and have an individual possibility. Uh, so you see there is not a fat window framing, it's very slender and inside people can use it as they want. There is no need, in the case of as the height of a hundred meter high building, there is no need to have any additional construction here against fire because it's about a meter which um, the ceiling goes out. And this is the last example, which you may have, it's, um, again, after 30 years, from the beginning on, this was on the World Exhibition in Hanover, so we did models, of course, and uh, made elements, uh, because it's a dimension which has never been realized up to that time. The motto was man, nature, technology. So we had to make a symbolic building and I said, well, okay, we, we make these umbrellas which are 40 by 40 meters. Each of these elements is 20 by 20. And we, we have, we use the water as channels in both directions. So the water which comes always in the center would fall down and be an attraction in case it's raining. The height is 25 meters. Uh, we developed this together with a group of engineers. Uh, that way it's hyperbolic and parabolic, the other direction. So there is a, we studied of course the possibility to make the tower and we did use the trunks from the, from the wood directly. We wanted to show the material as the theory grows and uh, tested it by uh, uh, ultrasound uh, to know uh, is the tree okay or something inside problematic with height of 50 meters and then it has been cut. So it was um, in the south of Schwarzwald uh, and uh, they could transport only one by one taking out uh, from the forest here and uh, then we had to take off all the outside and uh, this has been installed and kept there for weeks. Then it has been controlled in many ways and, and we had to be sure that uh, wind would not 
bring problems. All the prognosis were wrong. We did a lot of wind tunnel testing and in the end uh, came up with a solution which you can see here. We, we treated it also with uh, certain colors. And, uh, and this is one fourth of one of these umbrellas. This is 20 by 20 meters. And uh, to bring it out, uh, we, sh we had to open part of the facade and then it was brought in position. And uh, so uh, even here, uh, quite a series of effects happened, uh, which um, has a, the quality of decoration, if you want. Um, it was transparent because we, uh, of course, wanted not to have a dark area. So the daylight was requested and uh, the roofing was made uh, by the by membranes and and uh, t just to make the the crossing of this timber was not easy and a new kind of, of producing such a uh, such forms uh, this is the few to the top and uh, these metal things are flexible so they can move if there's a strong storm all this surface is movable and comes back in the right uh, position and uh, so in the very in the middle where these five meter wide channels are crossing there comes down this this tube which changes here the sections special reason for problems with dynamic forces and so on and but when it's raining and people go under the roof this was the idea it could be the attraction and uh, so this was um, the effect in the night hours and this is the one on the opening session and uh, of course I think I should stop now it was long enough the day but uh, just to, to tell you uh, it's a big topic to build with timber.